introduce, what I'd like to do now is to introduce Dr. Jemima Denise Antwi, Antwi, and she gave me um, lessons on trying to pronounce her name, and I'm still not very good at it, so my apologies, um, but I hope that I did an okay job of it. She is an international consultant with over 29 years experience in nursing and midwifery midwifery health, system strengthening programs, and project planning and implementation and qualitative research. She runs the new Center for Health Development and Research. She is on the International Confederation of Midwives, member of the board of directors representing Anglo Anglophone Africa. Her current interests include research, capacity building of health workforce, strategic planning, nursing and midwifery, and sickle cell disease genomic, genomics. Dr. Denise Amphrey has been involved with several international efforts in midwifery, nursing and health workforce strengthening, including be a being a member of the technical working groups for the WHO, ICM, UNFA, FPA and UPICO. In Anglophone Africa, she has worked for over 10 countries strengthening their midwifery systems based on the ICM, WHO and UNFPA policies. In Ghana, she is the current and inaugural president of the Ghana College of Nurse and, and Midwives. She initiated and led efforts to establish and grow the Fellowship College as a center of academic excellence. She has also served in many other leadership positions for projects and programs, development in health promotion, learning materials, development and work in, in the health sector. Dr. Denise Antwi, I welcome you to the international um, Day of the Midwife Conference, um, and I'm really excited to hear your presentation. Let me hand over to you. Thank you very much. I hope everybody can hear me. I can hear you well. Great. I wish to congratulate every midwife and to say greetings from Ghana, my motherland where I live, and to say that the midwives of the world, today is a great day for you. We appreciate you. We recognize you and mothers and their newborns are alive today because you did your work well. Surely, quality care counts. I am excited to walk you through my presentation. And as part of my presentation, I would like to talk to you about the fact that today we are celebrating midwives and we are saying that midwives, we are leading the way with quality care. As midwives, we are with the woman, we are with the newborn, we are with the family. And we have done this since the beginning of creation. My presentation is looking at expanding midwifery in Anglophone Africa, and I'm pitching it within the context of the ICM-UNFPA collaboration that took place between 2009 to 2013 and for which a uh, continuing effort continue to uh, take place through uh, UNFPA support and also country-based initiatives. And I would also want to touch looking into the future with respect to current discussions around the table for maternal and newborn health. And therefore, as part of my presentation, I will look at overview of the 2008-2013 ICM UNFPA collaboration the pillars of development, key initiatives that were taken within the Africa setting, some of the best practices, and then the current discourse around midwifery improvements and implications for Africa. Of course, being a representative for Africa, for the International Confederation of Midwives, let me indulge you a bit by sharing with you that ICM is a non-governmental organization representing over 500,000 midwives globally, and our vision is that we envision a world where every childbearing woman has access to a midwife's care for herself and her newborn. And of course, to extrapolate, we are looking at the families as well. Our mission is to strengthen our midwives' associations and to advance the profession of midwifery globally by promoting autonomous midwives as the most appropriate caregivers to childbearing women and keeping birth normal in order to enhance the reproductive health of women and health, the health of their newborns and their families as well. 
As ICM, our goal for midwifery strengthening is to ensure quality improvement in maternal and newborn health services. And we are doing this through the availability and the practice by competent professional midwives. Developed and upgraded through a standardized system of midwifery education, regulation, and association development, and informed by the ICM global standards for midwifery practice, which have been globally disseminated and which are being used in, in, in many countries. As ICM, we work locally with our midwives associations. We work regionally through our regions and collaboration with member associations. We also work globally with over 500,000 midwives by representing Sorry, my, I need to go back to my screen. Yes. We also collaborate with our partners at local, regional, and global levels. We also ensure equitable harnessing of the diverse representations on our board. So if you come on our board, we have various people coming from all the six regions of, of ICM. And then also, we expect that every member acts responsibly, accountably, and with integrity. The ICM UNFP Investing in Midwives program was a collaboration between UNFP and ICM between 2009 to 2013. By preparatory activities began in 20, 2008, and the sponsorship was from the Swedish and Dutch governments for supporting 12 Anglophone and Francophone countries and the target was about 20 countries in all. It started in March 2009, and it covered Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And within my remit, I was responsible for 10 African countries. And it looked at positioning international midwife advisors and regional advisors within the regions where the projects covered. The impetus was on looking at midwives, and this was in response to the advent of the MDGs, which started in the 2000s, and the call for a decade of action to ensure that we position the required human resources to achieve MDG 5. And this was to drive ICM vision for increasing midwife access to women of childbearing age and their children. And therefore, my work in Africa covered Ethiopia, Ghana, Liberia, Malawi, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Sudan, South Sudan, Uganda, and Zambia. The pillars of development were critical at education, regulation, and association strengthening, and of which the ICM essential competencies was an uh, what, what, what was the overarching factor which cut across the three pillars and for which we ensure that every midwife would be trained according to the seven ICM essential competencies. Again, we were looking at the mother and baby as the fulcrum for everything that was done as a midwife. And we believe that the mother and the baby needed to be impacted upon by a fully qualified midwife who is able to demonstrate the essential competence, that is the seven ICM essential competencies. And the person has gone through a midwifery education, that means the ICM global standards. And the person is a member of the midwifery association within the country and is regulated by the regulatory body based on legal provisions and also the global standards for regulation. And of course, that the status of midwives is recognized by the country within which the midwife uh, practices. And therefore, we we're looking at the mother and baby be impacted by a competent midwife who is educated and, and regulated and belongs to a body of midwives all within a global standard of recognition. And therefore, if you look at this slide, you see the autonomous midwife in the middle and that autonomous midwife can only be an autonomous midwife if the person is regulated the person is effectively 
educated. The person also belongs to the midwife uh, association and continually remains competent in whatever he or she does. Okay. At the start of our program, we realized that our various countries were at different levels of development. So quickly, we needed to know what the status was by inception. And for some of the countries that we were able to collect data from inception, we had Ethiopia having a three-year direct entry diploma program. They also had a four-year bachelor direct entry program. And they had just started with a master's in midwifery program. Ghana then had a three-year direct entry diploma program for, uh, for somebody to become a licensed midwife. And then in North Sudan, they had a four, that is Sudan now, they had four-year midwifery bachelor curricula, which started in 2010, and they continued to have what they call the village midwifery program, which was upgraded to a technician uh, program. And then we have in Sudan, in South Sudan, 18 months uh, program that trained what they called community midwives, and which then was being revised to a three-year diploma uh, program. And then we had uh, Zambia, which had a one-year post-nursing program, and then a road midwifery uh, program. But generally, I would say that in most of these countries, there were various levels of training to become a midwife, which sometimes was very confusing and which sort of got us all thinking, whether are we dealing with a professional midwife or we are dealing with auxiliary midwifery programs. And uh, generally, I would say that this has been a very big tug of war across many countries, how to standardize and make sure that there is one program for midwives or for people to become mid uh, midwives and for which people are clearly um, are able to go along the lines and develop themselves as competent midwives. Generally, we have less than 50% of our African governments having less giving nursing and midwifery professionals the privilege to self-regulate. There were absence of councils and, there were, and, and this has had negative impact on the quality of education and practice. Also, where we had in, uh, challenges around how to harmonize curricula and also accelerate the achievement of the health-related MDGs. By regulation, there were 20 countries that had national uh, legislation for autonomous midwifery. The definition of, of autonomy of midwifery was either inconsistent or unclear. And three out of 50 um, countries that are generally in Africa had distinct midwifery regulatory bodies. A number of countries cited the ICM definition of midwives or provided comparable language. Others use educational criteria and legal recognition of practice to define the midwife. Mechanisms exist for country to country practice in about 96% of the 50 countries that, that uh, were studied according to the SOMI 2011 report. And majority have accreditation system for training institutions. And these are country-based accreditation systems. And over 80% have authorized license and registration system in place. And most of these were find, found in Anglophone countries. Again, according to a situational analysis by a study that was done by WHO using a professional regulatory framework a document that uh, they developed, we realized that we had about 41 countries that had rules and regulation for nursing and midwifery. And that, uh, that 41% 40, of African region countries had these, and this included countries like Angola, Botswana, Gambia, uh, Ghana, and all. And then we also have 52% of African countries that had no regulatory system, and mostly coming from, as I said, the French countries and a few of the Central African countries. And uh, luckily for us, we had Benin, Burkina Faso, and Mali. We had just started the process of developing regulatory systems. As I said, most of the uh, Francophone countries, Anglophone countries had 
some forms of regulatory systems in place, though they were not able to meet the entirety of the ICM global standards. So I would say that guided by the ICM global standards that looked at competencies for basic education, education standards, regulation standards, and then the market, that is a legal association capacity assessment too. We also had the competency equipment list for skills lab, and then also gap analysis tools. We had a lot of our countries begin to do a reassessment of their systems, looking using the global standards as the benchmark to be able to assess and to do a mapping as to how far they have been able to de uh, deliver their system, their midwifery systems. We also had uh, the need for definition and redefinition of of a lot of terms and. We must say that the ICM glossary of terms was very helpful in helping countries to really define and redefine most of their terminologies and the meaning of the expressions that they used. And therefore, we looked at midwifery practice that is looking at preventive measures, the promotion of normal birth, looking at assessing of medical care, carrying out of emergency measures, then looking at the midwife having the important tax in health counseling, education and looking at the woman, the family, and then the community. So there was the need to sort of get the midwife to have this broad scope of work within which the midwife can practice and based on regulation by the countries. There was a lot of advocacy efforts that we put in place because there was a lot of challenges around recognizing the midwife to be at the decision-making table. Most often, the midwife is only there to receive instructions and to act as such. Decisions were being made and continue to be made for midwives without the midwife being necessarily at the decision-making table. So the State of the World Midwifery reports that were issued that in 2011 and 2013 served as very good advocacy tools. We also, most African countries began to celebrate the International Day of the Midwife that began to draw attention to what the midwife does and the ability of the midwife to save and to reduce maternal and newborn uh, mortality. Again, it also brought a lot of the uh, politicians and also policy, uh, policy makers and the governmental leadership at the table to interact with midwives and that began to draw uh, their empathy and also for them to appreciate the work of the midwives. We also had uh, uh, regional meetings, regional conferences and uh, that ensured that midwives could present, make presentations and to share the work that they were being done. Of course, for the first time, the 29th China Congress of ICM was held also in Durban, South Africa, which also brought a lot of African stakeholders to the table and brought Africa to the limelight. And WHO continued to work with Africa and also with the international partners in releasing frameworks that will help countries to, uh, to begin to strengthen their midwifery uh, systems. And I must say that in most of African countries, nursing and midwifery tend to go together where you have regulatory councils where it is both for nursing and midwifery and you go to certain countries also where it is mainly a nursing council or a regulatory body for which <coughs> midwifery is considered as <coughs> a subsidiary of nursing and these are some of the issues our advocacy efforts sought to address. <clears throat> Some of the key initiatives in education regulation and association strengthening. <clears throat> Sorry about this. There were a variety of needs assessments that were conducted in countries in order to determine the basis along which strategic programming could be taken from. In the area of midwifery education, a lot of work was done around curricular reviews to integrate the ICM competencies and to begin to reflect the ICM education standards. Some programs needed support to reframe their curricula 
some needed support to set up new programs and to upgrade a uh, certificate program to diploma, some to degree, and some also to master's. Um, the ICM skills list uh, reference document helped, helped countries to begin to look at their skills labs and how they can resource them with models and also computer labs to help students to better learn. And there was a lot of investment from UNFPA and JPAIGO working with countries to establish their skills, um, their skills labs. And then we also have continual professional education being set up for tutors and clinicians in order to ensure continual competencies. And then clinical sites began to be upgraded and also to be identified in order to help <coughs> the increasing numbers of midwives to have adequate practical skills. In the area of regulation, what most of the observation that we came up with was that a lot of the legislative instruments that uh, set up the regulatory bodies were way over outdated and had not been renewed for a very for several years and therefore uh, countries began to go back to to legislature to request for uh, their regulations to be revised and to be renewed there was also the need to re compile professional ethics and begin to encourage or to promote ethical behaviors. And in some countries, there was the need to establish councils which did not exist, or to begin to recognize midwifery decks at the councils. There was advocacy for deployment of midwives so that uh, there will be equitable distrib uh, distribution of midwives. And for some, as I said, acts were reviewed, changes in name uh, came up to include midwifery all discussions around the table began to look at including midwifery in the titling for the regulatory bodies. We also had, count, as we began to do a lot of advocacy efforts in countries, midwives which, uh, midwife bodies which were initially subsumed under nursing began to make efforts to stand on their own. So we had countries like Zambia, countries like uh, South Sudan, which hitherto did not have anybody, begin to form associations. We had countries, um, uh, the midwives being able to stand up and say that they want to glean themselves from the nursing bodies and begin to be on their own. So this happened in, in, in Liberia, we had Nigeria, all of them coming up to say that as midwives, we want to stand on their own. We had uh, recently Kenya also coming up to stand on their own and Namibia uh, coming up. So all these are uh, efforts or ripple effects of trying to recognize the midwife and to get the midwife empowered so that they can represent themselves. <clears throat> A lot of training was also done for midwifery leadership and the midwife and the market tool was introduced into the associations to help them to identify where their strengths and their gaps are in order that they can uh, revamp the associations and to get it working. Okay. We also recognize that there were regional bodies that existed in the, in the, on the continent and there was a need for us to associate with them and to link up with them. And therefore, we looked at uh, the Eastern, Central, Southern Africa uh, conference of nurses, that is we call the Exacon. We began to interact with them and to do uh, work with them in partnerships so that we'll be able to share the midwife story. And again, I want to emphasize that in the Africa region, nursing was very much the profound uh, profession where midwifery was subsumed under nursing. So to begin to advocate for midwifery was not an easy task. Sometimes you were branded as trying to bring confusion between the two professions and you were also seen as trying to cause a uh, dissension within countries but we persisted and gradually we were able to tell the midwife story and to continue to get midwives to be at the table and people began a uh, midwife began to decide that uh, i want to be a midwife 
rather than be a nurse midwife or be subsumed under midwifery. So, uh, under nursing. So, it gave quite some impetus for midwives to sit at the table. We also uh, participated in meetings around the African Regulatory Collaborative, which was again an initiative that was set, set up with PEPFA funds and supported by Emory University of the United States of America. And that was also an initiative where we tried to get midwifery to stand out. So some countries chose to look at projects within midwifery and to strengthen uh, midwifery. Okay. I want to briefly touch on some of the best practices that emerge. I would say that in all, we had over 20 African countries being impacted by the ICM UNFP initiative because as we started with 12, we had more countries deciding to come on board. And I must say that UNFPA countries, uh, offices in countries, were the driving links within which uh, some, most of the initiatives took place. And this had a very good knock-on effect within countries which were originally not even part of the initiative that came on board and said we wanted to join. So globally, we had over 40 countries in Africa, Asia, and Latin America uh, coming on board to, to use the same template or to apply the strategic uh, uh, the strategic direction that was used by the project in order to expand their midwifery systems. So today you have UNFPA having country midwife advisors within their countries trying to drive the midwifery effort. So if you look at Ethiopia, for example, now they can even boast of PhD programs in midwifery. And there's been a lot of strengthening of the midwifery association to become a very strong organization. We have large numbers of midwives who are receiving continuous professional development in order to keep them updated. And clinical sites and schools received a lot of support through the Swedish um, uh, and, and the Dutch support. <clears throat> now, we have a lot of the countries doing direct entry training. South Sudan, which used to be a country with no, with no structure, now is has uh, engaged in diploma level education and we have every year the the school churning out midwives with diploma level uh, qualification the village uh, certificate midwifery program has been scrapped and they are looking at uh, moving to the next level level of a bachelor training in midwifery in the very near future in ghana through the midwifery initiative we had a uh, a bachelor level uh, program being introduced so that midwives can acquire first degrees. We, the, through a, a special dispensation of government, fellowship programs have been introduced where midwives can develop themselves to become fellows of the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives, where I sit as the inaugural president. And now we can have direct entry midwifery uh, training. We're looking at introducing masters in midwifery in the very near future and expecting that we would also follow up with training in uh, at PhD levels. And we are open for international collaborations in this area. We also have done a lot of work looking at that is Ghana, looking at career advancement in midwifery, where now midwives can progress along their own direct lines. And as I said, to the level of specialist and midwives also we are uh, looking at how we can get government to recognize a midwifery death at the level of policy decision making. And midwives can also uh, rise up to the same ranks as nurses have risen in the past. We also have uh, what we call the community based health planning and services program, which have been designed to create more access to midwifery care, where midwives can be placed at communities within a five kilometer radius where uh, women and, and their families can access a midwife's care. This is an initiative that government has adopted that is looking at creating over 4,000 uh, search centers around them within deprived communities to enable a midwife uh, access. Okay. Through the initiative also, we had quite a number of 
north-south uh, training programs that will enable the north to impact on the south and to bring a uh, partnership and, and, and uh, exchange of ideas, exchange of expertise around the world. So we have Sierra Leone and the Midwest Association of the Dutch Midwives uh, forming a twin. We, we now have Sierra Leone, the Dutch Midwives and Ghana forming a new collaboration. We have Zambia partnering with ACNM of the United States. And then we also have South Sudan and Canada coming up with training activities, some of which were shared at uh, China Congresses to bring attention to development. Now the current talk is looking at South-South collaboration and looking at are there very good, strong military associations within Africa that can also impact on other uh, African countries that are just about wanting to start their associations. Of course, having been able to come this far, we continue to have ex challenges to expanding midwifery in Africa. A lot has been done through the ICM UNFP initiative. Unfortunately, the program and uh, the program ended in 2013, but we know that most of the countries are continuing to work around midwifery. But of course, the challenges come up as we have come up with a sustainable development goals, looking at the 17 goals and universal access to help. There are big issues around and creating the enabling environment for midwives to uh, to work and provide quality care. And as we celebrate the International Day of the Midwife to look at midwives providing quality care without enabling in the environment, without the midwife being effectively resourced, without the midwife having a standardized system of education to cut out all these various levels of entrance into midwifery, it is a big challenge still in Africa. We also continue to experience economic downturns in countries that undermine the employment uh, employment of adequate numbers of midwives. So though the human resource directories may have the staffing norms, you go into certain facilities and they do not have the full complement of midwives in order that quality care can be provided. And this does undermine the sort of care that midwives provide. Then also we continue to have various levels of entry into midwifery in the region, which countries defend by saying that they need lower cadres of midwives that they can afford to pay. And also the high trained midwives are not willing to go into the communities. And therefore the only way is to train lower levels so that they can place them in communities. These are sensitive uh, issues that we continue to talk around with governments it does undermine the image of the midwife, the ability of the midwife to develop career, because the lower you train, the more difficult it is for you to lift yourself up to come to the line light. So it does surely affect the profession of midwifery. There's also the issues around uh, overproduction and inequitable distribution still. We have a lot of countries, for example, our country, Ghana, where so many midwives have been produced and the government is not able to recruit all of them annually. And therefore, we tend to have two years of backlog of midwives who have not been recruited. And this is a worrying situation in our countries and which is also ill-influencing midwives to divert into other professions or to find other themselves in other careers which they didn't train. And then, of course, the issue about limited career pathway, where in most countries you train as a nurse or a midwife, you are either a, a faculty or you are a clinician. Most countries have not been able to develop a variable career pathways where midwives can branch into. And therefore, it seems as though you, are, you either teach or you either provide bedside service. And sometimes it does not give the young midwives the needed challenge to want to stay in the profession. We also have issues around competent faculty and continual uh, and keeping themselves continually uh, competent. And um, I think the issues around that is that most often there are challenges around faculty preparation. 
currently, because of, again, the, um, the work that has been done in Africa, trying to get African countries to recognize midwifery, now with the introduction of higher level education, now you have faculty who are, who are increasingly getting their masters and their PhDs. It used to be that most faculty were either at the level at which they trained. And therefore, it meant that if you, are, you have first degree, you cannot be allowed to train people at a master's level. So this tends to delay a lot of progress in academic development of midwives. But we are glad that gradually countries are now opening up and they are having higher uh, degree uh, programs. But the challenge is making faculty continually clinically competent. Most faculties stop practicing midwifery when they go into academics. And therefore, there is the issue around maintaining the theory uh, uh, and clinical skills gap that does not augur well for continued uh, education of, of students and also of residents who want to develop themselves in the profession. Again, there's also a lot of governmental infiltration into regulation of nursing and midwifery, of midwifery, whereby government tend to dictate the level at which uh, midwives should be trained. And this is all polit sometimes politically engineered, where they promise communities that they are going to make available to them a certain caliber of, or, I mean, healthcare services. And they realize that people who are trained at the level of expertise may not be willing to go to the community level because the services and the and the system that they provide at that community level is so basic that it does not allow for quality care and therefore they insist on training uh, subsidiary or auxiliary uh, staffing to put them at the community and of course the community people often do not know that these are not people who are fully trained and they do that, as I said, for political reasons, and that is a big challenge for the midwifery profession. We also have challenges around midwives being able to stand as independent organizations. As I said, there are some countries that still have to battle with being under the nursing unionized bodies and have go are going through a lot of challenges trying to assert themselves and to stand as independent uh, midwives. So these continue to happen in certain countries, especially the southern part of Africa and also the central part. For most of Eastern and uh, West Africa, you have midwives being able to stand on their, uh, on their own. Very sorry to interrupt. Just a reminder that just a couple of minutes left until the end of the presentation. Sure. Thank you. I'm ending soon. So now as we look at the current discourse around midwifery for quality improvement, we have the SDGs to contend with, and we know that for the midwife to be able to provide quality care, the midwife is critical to the SDG achievement. And we are actually, as you look at SDG 3A, the workforce is critical. If we would attain the indices for maternal improvement, the midwife must have access to the woman. And by access, governments need to set up systems that would ensure that the, the qualified, competent midwives are placed within the community, not auxiliaries. Fully trained and educated midwives must be positioned and supported and enabled to provide competent services. We're looking at the global strategy for women, children, and adolescent health. We, we saying that the mother and the newborn must thrive, they must survive, they must thrive so that they can transform and continue their societal responsibilities. This will call again for the educated and competent uh, midwife. They must be where they must be to be able to ensure that everybody is able to practice their rights. And this, I believe, is a big challenge which governments should be brought to, to book in order to get them to give the needed attention to the midwife. We also have the human resources for all global strategy that also has been disseminated worldwide. As I said, countries, a lot of countries have a challenge with ensuring accessible, uh, acceptable midwifery workforce for quality health system because they are not able to recruit even uh, the, the midwives that are 
trained within the countries to be able to position them to increase this access to quality health. And this is a challenge that African governments need to deal with. We also have the African regulatory framework that has been developed. And definitely as you, you, WHO drives this effort, countries need to begin to look at regulatory bodies. Some countries decide to have one regulatory body for all health professionals because they do not like professionals being able to uh, get the needed empowerment to stand on their own. And this is also a challenge that we need to deal with in Africa. As we look into the future for SDGs and universal health, we need to continue to disseminate the ICM global standards. We need to continue to do the international and regional advocacy for adoption. And I believe that ICM needs to do a lot of regional advocacy efforts. We need to translate the regulatory policies to feed into education and continually engage policymakers around uh, regulatory issues in, in midwifery. There is the need to standardize midwifery education across Africa so that even if we decide that diploma qualification is the minimum, all countries can have diploma education and therefore there can be cross country uh, uh, as a recognition of qualification so that people, if countries are overproducing, the uh, professionals can find themselves in other countries to be able to provide service. And uh, this is very critical. We also need to recognize that a midwife is a midwife, it's a mid midwife wherever they are. And therefore, again, it is going to enhance the cross country and globalization of the recognition of midwives. The, we have issues around respectful care, and therefore we need to continue to uh, look at professional ethics and attitudes to care. If we are looking at our theme quality care, we, there's a lot of work that needs to be done around, uh, around that in order to ensure that there's universal access to midwife care. We also need to look at synergy in leadership and to do a lot of work around the associations to develop leadership that will stand for the profession and advocate for the profession and actually virtually get governments to pay attention to, to leadership. Most often, the leadership sometimes are not able to stand up to government and that sometimes leads to undermining of the power of midwives. We also now, we tend to have a lot of young midwives who are coming up into the profession and who are very much unclear as to what the opportunities are. We need to have a mentoring system that will ensure that the young midwives are confident and have the skills and the leadership ability to speak for the profession. Research is very, very minimal around the countries. We need to look at our academic institutions and to encourage midwifery research and to get a lot of midwives going into academics and being able to stay uh, focused in uh, midwifery research. And then we have the Confederation of African Midwives Associations, that is Konama, which is a very young body of African representation that has been set up to speak for midwifery across the con uh, continent. And this, I believe, that is, is synonymous to the European Midwives uh, uh, Association body and also what has been set up in the Caribbean. And I believe that this is a body that needs to be nest and nurtured to be able to stand for African midwives. And therefore, as we look towards 2030, we need to look at standardization of a lot of our midwifery education resources. We need to have a very strong supervisory system. We need to look at mentorship and preceptorship. It's very weak in a lot of countries. We have to continue to look at midwifery regulation association and to bring them to the global standards of ICM. Our policy direction should need should begin to look at self-regulation for, for midwifery, uh, even if it is together with nursing, midwifery should be seen out there and to stand out. There should be accessibility of services at the community level, and we need to encourage uh, what we call independent midwifery services, or what countries call private midwifery. Most of these are dying out because of aging midwives who are going on retirement with nobody to replace them. So there must be some succession planning that have be put in place to allow mid independent midwives to operate at the community level as, as entrepreneurs and also at a profit level. That will be, 
would uh, engage their interest to stay on. We need to look at acceptable maybe free care and quality of care needs to be critically looked at as we provide uh, the enabling environment. And of course, research is very critical. I am very sorry. Oh, I see you flicking through your slides. So that's awesome. You know exactly what I'm going to say. <laughs> so as we look at midwifery into the next generation, we need to look at midwifery leaders, the power of synergy, and the power of togetherness. We need to look at purpose. If African midwives can come together and have be the same purpose and add and advocate for one direct entry to midwifery across the continent, I think it would be worthwhile. We need to also be able to bring out the, the contracts between nursing and midwifery and to see it as uh, two independent professions, but very much uh, working together and supporting each other. That would be helpful than to see midwifery as a subset of nursing. And I believe that if we work together, in the end, it will be well worth it, and the mothers of Africa and the children of Africa can can uh, can stay alive, and we can achieve our MDG targets, our targets for 2030. Thank you very much for listening. It's been a great pleasure keeping you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Denise Anfri. That was an amazing presentation. And I could tell that there was so much more that you could share with us if we had more time. I'm disappointed that we didn't, um, but I really enjoyed everything that you could share with us today and everything that we learned. Um, we have run out of time for questions. I'm really sorry. So um, I won't be opening stuff up there for questions, but there is some um, wonderful comments and information in the chat box to have a read and to share with everybody. Um, and I, again, I just thank you so much for your presentation. I think that it was fantastic.